What's up everybody and welcome to a brand new episode of my Angular Tips. You probably heard of ng-surf. ng-surf is one of the most used CLI commands. It starts up a dev server and serves your application. But did you know that ng-surf offers some neat options? In this video I'm going to show you my three favorite ng-surf options. So the first option that I use a lot is the minus minus port option. By default, ng-surf starts a dev server and serves your application on port 4200. But sometimes this is not the right port for our use case. In such cases, we can use the minus minus port option and pass our desired port. Our Angular app is now served on a different port. This is a very handy tip that you can use in your daily project. The next option I'm going to show you is my favorite ng-surf option. Whenever you run ng-surf, you either have to type localhost 4200 or you have to click on the link in the ng-surf output log. Instead of manually typing localhost 4200 or clicking in the link in the ng-surf output log, we can simply use ng-surf minus o or ng-surf minus minus open, which is equivalent. As you can see, using the minus O or minus minus option flag tells ng-surf, hey, I'm too lazy for this, please automatically open a new tab on localhost 4200 in my default browser. The last option I'm going to show you is the minus minus verbose option. To be honest, I don't use this option too much, but when I use it, it's very helpful and therefore it also made it to my favorites list. ng-surf is pretty epic and it usually works. And even if we have a compile error in our code, the log output is very, very helpful. However, there are cases where this log is not enough. In such cases, we can use the minus minus verbose flag to get a more detailed log output and better debugging information. With the minus minus verbose flag, we can see additional log information from the Webpack dev server, for example, where our application runs, what our 404's fallback will be, and so on. So those were my three favorite ng-surf options. If you like this video and want to receive more tips about Angular or front-end development in general, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter. Till next time.